It's been three years now since we visited the tiny house that broke the internet, and today we are so excited to be revisiting Matt and Lisa to see how they're getting on. Hey Lisa, how are hey, you? Hey Bryce, lovely to see you. It's lovely to see you. G'day Matt, how yeah, you doing mate? I'm great, how are you? Very well, thank you. It's just so nice to see you both again. Yes, yeah, yeah. great to have you back. And the place is looking absolutely fantastic. Thank you. Thanks. It's hard to believe that it has already been three years since we were last here. Yeah, Doesn't pushing it fly, forward. yeah, yeah. Changed a little bit since you were here last. Yeah, it's definitely changed a lot since we were here last. I see you've completely changed this undercover area. Yeah, this has been an asset to us, definitely through the windy months and the rainy months, you know, so the shade sails didn't um, didn't uh, fare too well. Oh, really? What happened to the shade sails? Uh, it turns out living in a cliff, um, there's a lot of wind and yeah, it just ripped them down, opened up chain links. Disaster. Two o'clock so, in the morning. Yeah. Wasn't good. No. Oh, no. Yeah. <laughs> I can definitely see that it's more secure than the sails, and I think it looks really good. Yeah, we tried to not have the whole thing covered just so we could have a little bit of broken light and that kind of thing as well, but it's just a little bit nicer to have a little bit of a landing area if it's raining for a few days in a row, you know, anyone who lives in a tiny house will tell you that. It's pretty frustrating walking all your mud straight into the house, so. Definitely. Yeah. And because you have got such a nice deck area as well, it must actually just in general make the space a lot more usable. Mm. 100%. I work from home now, so I'm out here all the time working as opposed to sitting inside if it's a nice day. So you're working from home now because you were studying last time we yeah, met. Yeah, I was studying full time back then. I was also working full time, but I changed positions in the company I work for and now I work from home a couple of days a week, going to the office a couple of days a week and it's nice to just be here out on the deck on a nice day. Oh yeah, what an amazing place to work. Yeah, it's pretty awesome. And you've got the barbecue out here as well, so it's nice to have a bit more space to cook and eat undercover. Yeah. Yeah, it is nice when we have people over, mm. you know, we've, we've got the bar area as well, so we can all sit up and we can have the barbecue going, a lot more bench space. And I see you've done quite a bit of planting and landscaping since we were here last as well. Yeah, based on our location, we needed plants that were going to be happy in the sun. So mm. we've got a bunch of citrus and some olive trees and they've just finished flowering, so we're bound to get some fruit this season too. And one of the really big changes to this place is I see you've taken it off the grid. Yeah, look, it's not a true off-grid house. We still have a feed-in and everything. But yeah, that's the concept I'm testing, whether or not we can sustain all of our energy use from just the panels that we've got. So yeah, we'll, we'll see when we get 12 months under our belt. It's only been a couple of months. Yeah, because yeah. that is a big solar system you've got there. Mm. Yeah, it's almost 15 kilowatts, 36 panels there. Wow. Um, so yeah, on a sunny day, it really cranks, which is cool to see, you know. That is really cool. And you're actually charging the EV off it as well. Yeah, yeah, um, that's right. I mean, it does, there's definitely some tweaking and some balancing to do, but I've done the maths and it should work, so yeah. Um, but if, it, if it's a cloudy day and I really do need some charge, then I'd still be taking from the grid, you know, it's not a, not a true offset, off-grid setup, so. So to have the solar powering the home as well as the EV, how much battery storage do you need to make all that work? We've got just shy of 15 kilowatts in solar panels and we've got two 13 and a half kilowatt batteries. My goal isn't to charge the EV from the batteries, just to get us through the night or hopefully two nights worth of power with the batteries. And then um, obviously because you don't charge the EV every day, there's still you know an aspect of timing there. Sort of obviously try and collect as much overflow power as you can and store that in the EV, you know? That's a great way of doing it. Hmm. And you still got the truck there as a backup anyway. We like to go um, off-road at times and, and camping and that kind of thing. And the Tesla isn't really rugged enough for that. So yeah. Best of both worlds. Yeah, Basically. that's it. <laughs> And you've got the solar hot water heater too? Yeah, that's right. Um, when you guys last came, we had a gas um, continuous flow water heater on the back. But yeah, part of this whole setup, mostly it collects its energy from the sun as well independently. And then uh, if, it doesn't get, uh, if it doesn't get hot enough, it'll use the power from the batteries to top up, so. Excellent. And how has life changed for you since adding all of the solar systems? Not heaps yet. I've started putting the washing machine on a timer and the dishwashers on a timer and things like that. But we kind of, because it's so new to us, we still want to see how much it, we're actually using. So we're going to sort of try and keep 
fairly normal for the next few months and then see where we can sort of change and make efficiencies elsewhere. And I see you've still got the cat enclosure out the back there with an addition of a chair now as well. They love that chair. They sit on the arms. <laughs> yeah, uh, um, it's definitely not for us. It's no, for no, no, it's for them. <laughs> they love it. They roll around all over it and hide under it and chase each other around it. But it's... um. They like it. Something yeah. dry that they can sleep on and claw instead of the furniture inside. Uh, not long after you guys left last time, um, we a, a tree branch fell down as well. Oh, so no. um, it kind of did get a bit squashed, but it seemed to bounce back okay, you know. It, you can definitely see where it landed. But <laughs> it still it fared well. There, so, yeah. Surprisingly fared well. Yeah. And I see you've got the addition of a new puppy as well. Yes. That's yes. Gus. Apple of her eye. <laughs> yeah, they don't get along um, particularly well, but the oh, cats have claimed the top floor and they've just got a dart pass to get out from under the couch. So it's, We're working through it, though. Yeah, yeah he's enough. doing pretty well. He's a big dog for a tiny house. He is a big dog for a tiny house. He was uh, rescued. He was very small when we got him and he didn't stop growing. Mm. So now he's rather large. That's okay, we've adapted. <laughs> and he's got this amazing area to run about as well. Yeah, he's got loads of space to run around. He comes with me to the office and I'm here a lot of the time, so we get to hang out a lot. Um, he's mm. very social. Nice, really good. Well, it's so cool to see how the outdoor space has changed and I cannot wait to see what you've done inside. Can we take a look? Yeah, Absolutely, come on through. Thank you very much. Oh, the place is looking great. Thank you. New couch though. New couch. Yeah, definitely. It just wasn't comfortable enough, you know. Luckily, we had measured off this actual couch for me to try and make it. And essentially the only thing that we lost, that there were some drawers underneath the other couch, but it turns out we never used them anyway. They so. were full of junk yeah. that ended up getting donated or tossed anyway. Yeah, that's right, so yeah. And the lounge space is for lounging, so it's so important not to compromise on comfort. Yeah, Absolutely. That's right, especially tiny living, you know. You've got to multitask on there, you eat your dinner, and, and um, yeah, rainy days, Lisa will work from there, you know, so. Um, it's got to be comfy. Yeah, it's got to be comfy. And the fire's still working well for winter living? That yeah. thing cracks. Absolutely love it. Yeah. Um, yeah, best thing we ever did. Sometimes we just put it on for the vibe. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I totally understand that one, eh? There's just nothing like having a roaring fire in the middle of winter, Absolutely. even if you're cooking yourself out of the house. And you've got the AC in here as well, and that's running well off the solar? So far, so good. Mm. Yeah, It's only been definitely. a couple of days it's been working. Yeah, it was yeah. definitely one of the things that I tried to measure and make sure that we can cannot alter our lifestyle too much and still um, rely on what we're collecting from the panels, you know? Yeah. And you've got these beautiful skylights in here, of course. How are they working out? They're really great. After you guys were here last time, we invested in some honeycomb blinds to go over the top of them. So now they're slightly more energy efficient as well. So obviously the honeycomb traps the heat out or keeps the heat out and traps the cooler air in. So we've pretty much put that around all of the top floor windows and it's made a huge difference. That's perfect. So you can just have it all open when you want and then close it down completely when you don't. A hundred percent. It keeps the house a lot cooler throughout summer. Mm. And the kitchen is still looking absolutely beautiful. How's this working out? It's great. Nothing's changed really. It's still really, really functional and that's what we wanted. We wanted a kitchen that would last us for a long time and be functional. Probably the only thing that we still have on natural gas is the cooktop. Yeah. It didn't really seem um, worth ripping that out, throwing it in the bin and, and getting an induction or something um, because it is a pretty low sort of usage. Um, appliance so and it's actually pretty hard to beat cooking on gas as well yeah I've cooked on induction before and it's tricky mm. this is a lot easier definitely for sure yeah. yeah and of course you had built so much storage into this kitchen and that's all still adequate yeah we still have tons of storage there's I mean like everybody you accumulate bits and pieces but it all fits in nicely mm. and you've got the cool his and hers wardrobe here still how is that working out yeah it's really great we have more than enough room in there for both of us mm. or one each so yeah we like we still got to keep it tidy you know try and do the one in one out kind of rule with clothes and that kind of stuff otherwise yeah. it does get a bit overflowish yeah um but yeah no it's definitely enough space Fantastic. And above us, we've got your sleeping lofts with this really cool walkway. And of course, you had extended the height in this one, didn't you? Yeah, we did. We have the luxury of going a little bit higher. So we do have the standing room in the master loft. And just being able to stand up in that loft really is such a luxury, isn't it? It's made a huge difference, yeah. I think. And when that's, we have to make the bed especially. Um, but it's, <laughs> it's one of the biggest questions that we get 
quite a lot through email or on Facebook or Insta and stuff like that is like, how did you manage to get standing high? It's like, we have the luxury of just going a little bit bigger than most people can. And then the other loft, the cats have made their own. Mm. So that's yeah, their little do, bedroom. We, we don't really go up there often guests, anymore. So um, the cats claim that since the dog obviously keeps them up there. So yeah, that's the, sort of their little chill out area. They love it too. It's really sunny. Mm. Those bloomin' greedy cats, though, they've taken over your loft, even though they've got that cool outdoor area. I know, and they still sleep with us at night as well, which is... Yeah, they take more than half the bed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, of course, one of the things that's always stood out about this house is the incredible bathroom, which, of course, makes sense because bathroom renovation is such a huge part of your business, isn't it? Yeah, we still love it. Um, it's hard to sort of stay out of the trap of kind of wanting the, the most cutting-edge, up-to-date thing, um, which is... Hard for me because that's sort of what we do for my clients. Yeah. Um, but, you know, I think it's a pretty timeless um, design. I think it's a beautiful design. You've got the three shower heads in there as well. You're making good use of those? Yeah, I mean, we've both got one and now the dog has one. So <laughs> bathing him is actually really, really easy. So it's been three years now since we were last here. Is Tiny House Living still working out for you? Yeah, 100%. We yeah, still we love, love living here. Yeah. Since we've had a lot of rain recently, it's made it a little bit harder. I think we tend to get a little bit of cabin fever, mm. particularly after days and days and days of rain. Probably I wouldn't be able to work from here at the same time as no, Lisa. thanks to yeah. COVID, we learned that we cannot work in the same space together. <laughs> <laughs> we can short term, like one week. Yeah, because COVID was sort of such a challenging time for everyone, wasn't it? Yeah, that's right. A few friends of mine set up like ultimate home offices, which I was a little bit envious of, but I've still got the office I can go to. Yeah, definitely. And having lived in the space now for so long, is there anything that you're now looking to change? We did change the couch, and I think that was pretty much the only thing that mm. wasn't working to how we wanted. We haven't had any major changes to the layout or anything like that. Um, no. So I'm happy with the extra effort I put in to design it and, um, and try and think of uh, solutions, you know? Yeah, we made it very, very livable because we wanted it to last and we didn't want to have to move or get sick of it or anything mm. like that. Maybe a pool. Yeah. Oh, a pool would be a phenomenal addition. We've got a spot for it. Yeah. Nice. We're, re we're ready. Oh, we'll definitely come back when that's built. <laughs> 46 degree days, it's going to be stellar. Absolutely. <laughs> Love that. So you've been living now in a tiny house for quite a long time. What would you say that living in the tiny home has taught you about yourselves? It's yeah. like we never lived in another house at yeah, all. Yeah, I don't it... consider it a big change in our lifestyle, really. No. Like less stuff, less, I mean, less things. But We um... think about the stuff that we purchase now because mm. we're like, can that fit in the tiny house? And mm. when people will say, oh, what do you want for Christmas or your birthday? We're just like, nothing, it won't fit in the house. Yeah. And they're like, it's a good excuse. Sweet. <laughs> yeah, so I think yeah. it just proved the concept, really, you know. I don't know how we'd go if, if there was kids and stuff, but with oh. the pets... I don't want for a bigger house, you know. It sounds like your pets will take up more space than the kids anyway. Definitely the dog's the dog. larger than we thought he was going to be, so yeah. he takes up a fair space. You know, yeah. the couch, one of the reasons why we did change the couch is because there's a, a, like a little add-on that we that he sleeps on. That's where he sleeps. Yeah, that's Very right. Because there's no crates or beds or anything like that. You know, you have to make that, you know, his sleeping arrangements adaptable. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> Coming back to the space as well, it's really nice to know how much of the space is working for you. But it's also nice to know, like with things like with the couch or the shade sails, when things don't work, it is still possible to change them, just like any home. That's right. Um, it does break your heart a little bit ripping apart work that you've already done. But, um, you know, you can definitely, I guess, it makes it worthwhile just to make sure that it is sort of working absolutely how I envisaged, you know. What does having this home mean to you? I definitely um, look forward to sort of coming home, especially in the winter with the fire, you know. Nine times out of 10, Lisa's already started that and because she works from here. So it's just so nice to walk in and just be comfortable and, and um, be able to unwind and leave the stress of work where it belongs at work, you know. Because of where we are and the uniqueness of the property, it's definitely a bit of an oasis. So when you do come home, you've got all the greenery, you've got the trees and you've got a small house and it's a nice environment to be in. So those stresses do seem to kind of just be left at the top of the driveway or at the office and you come home and you just, yeah, take a big deep breath and it's a lot nicer. 
Well, after all of these years, it's so great to see you both still so happy in this home. It really is testament to some great design and some skill in building. This really is such a beautiful oasis that you've created for yourselves. Thank you so much for welcoming us back. Thanks for coming back. Thanks, Bryce. All my pleasure. It is just so nice for me to be back in this home. This tiny house really is home to some game-changing design and after all these years it's so great to see that it's working out so well and that Matt and Lisa are still so happy in their home. For us to come back and visit them again it really is like seeing members of our tiny house family and so being back here right now is just a joy. <laughs>